Hi, I'm Elise. And I'm Aaron. And we are the INFJ couple. So what's our topic for today? Why INFJs help others but not themselves. Mm. Let's find out. Mm. So we've got a meme that's inspired this topic and we're just going to kind of expound on it a little bit. Why is it funny? What is the truth behind the humor? So why do INFJs help others but not themselves? Yeah, I think there's a number of facets. Because empathy comes naturally to us, that's why. That's a starting facet. That's not to say that other personality types aren't empathetic at all. Um, it's more so that that is a primary element of our nature in conjunction with a number of other things, including our introverted intuition. So we're picking up, a lot of people can feel empathy, but a lot of people don't notice the situations that are requiring empathy. And we are picking up on a number of those uh, keys and triggers without even recognizing it. So subconsciously we're picking up that another person is requiring our empathetic nature by the little cues and the things that we notice without even noticing that we're noticing it subconsciously and then we're automatically empathizing with them before we've even registered that we're feeling that way mm. and um, as is yeah. in society there's always going to be a lack of empathy isn't there yes. seemingly so to us at <laughs> least <laughs> not the most well-liked type of people if the empathy is at the expense of someone else's greed or laziness, they're gonna have a problem with that. Yeah. That's where the conflict might come in with other people. But with for us, you it's being like too a, empathetic. You gotta put like a plug. Yeah. Like a massive plug in it. Yeah. Just it's a marathon. It. Your life is a marathon. Just slow it all down. Don't burn yourself out too quickly. That's I'm not sure where you are in your life, but yeah. All that compassion, all that shits that you're giving, all of the shits that you give deplete you. And then you end up spending a whole lot of time, don't get me wrong, love time by myself, as you, we mm. both do, obviously, hence the introvert. <laughs> it's the recharging. But when you're too depleted, your battery's low and you're still empathizing, you're drawn from a well that doesn't exist. And shit gets real messy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's hence when you're caring for others and struggling to care for yourself. Yeah, so it's another reason why it's easier for us to care for others but not ourselves is because we're kind of better at it, aren't we? Mm. Because we feel like our own this is health. a minefield in here other people we can figure out yeah. quite well our own health needs are a bottomless pit basically <laughs> i know it sucks but you just gotta accept it there's something about you that's always gonna be angsty and unresolved and like a fairly inner peace for you is gonna be super challenging ever elusive mm -hmm. It's all right. The if thing you're... that keeps you going though is this like unrelenting uh, belief that all of mankind is inherently good. Underneath all of the sarcasm and like occasional cynicism to cope with the rest of the world because you don't feel like you fit in with the rest of the world. You're not particularly sure that you like the rest of the world, but underneath all that you care deeply for everyone anyway, even if they're a complete turd. So it's this real mix between the fact that you know you probably shouldn't care as much as you do in some situations because you're gonna get burned, but you still pour, pouring your soul out. Would you like some? <laughs> hey, can I walk you home? Just being like, hey, can I walk you home? Hey, can I walk you home? What I wanna say in that last point is it's okay that inner peace is ever elusive to you. It's just, if you recognize it, then you can be okay with it not being okay and it'll make life a lot easier and make just knowing yourself knowing it's part of you that it's gonna be a little bit of an uphill battle for you whereas other people they're walking on a road that's like this and perhaps for you it's more like that but 
you can just enjoy the uphill climb mm. because it might just be you're going to be on a high mountain at the end of it and you're going to top of Mount Fuji and you're going to have a beautiful view of the top maybe because your inner peace has a little bit more depth to it but don't even worry about comparing it to mm. others don't compare just know that it's okay if it's a bit of a struggle for you some people who have extroverted sensing they're just going to be naturally inclined to be less busily tied up with their own mind and just out there looking at things able and, to be present and yeah just in their environment just on a football field just being present waiting for the ball to come their way and knowing exactly what to do when it does that's that's not we can do that too, but... It takes a lot more work. <clears throat> a lot, a lot it's more It's actually work. really good for us to do that. <laughs> anyway, back to the point is that the reason why it's a little bit easier for us to look after others is because it's just in your nature. And part of that is that we can sometimes not know where we begin and the other person ends. Yeah, that's an issue because you feel like you are actually experiencing their emotions. Yeah, and that's like, that's a very beautiful thing. Mm. And Super powerful. You can have a connection make, with someone that's on a whole other level. That will make you very attractive to other people. They'll want to know more about you. They'll kind of sense that. Doesn't matter what personality types they have. They'll sense that and it is... It's that extroverted feeling with the introverted intuition. Yeah. It's like you can then have, you then have the capacity to be um, super open in certain situations and like unleash these really intense truths and feelings that other people would just never bear their soul. Mm, and accommodating. Yeah. And provide anecdotes that people be like, oh, wow, okay. You really listened and really took on board what I said and shared an appropriate experience. Very, you've got to be very deliberate about who you share those things with though. Mm. Yeah, very ba careful. boundaries, that's where it comes in. Boundaries is about looking after you and just finding the line where- Protect that lovely heart of yours. Where do you have? Yeah, where, where, where is the line? What? <laughs> who what? am I? <laughs> I don't know. Where is the person in you that has needs yeah. and they're maybe not getting met? Are they crying out for attention and you are just helping other people because you think that'll make you feel better? Mm. You can run, but you can't hide. Mm -mm. So, it's going to come to you at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And it'll cripple you. That burnout, it's because you're not looking after yourself and you're looking after others. And here's the thing, other people will be fine. They might be just a little bit inclined to take what's on offer. Yes, and, and you are willing to offer it. And, and you're gonna perhaps end you're that just will... offering a little too much. Mm. You get a big dose of compassion fatigue. Yeah. That's the thing. So what can we do to... Just wait a sec. Okay. Can I have a drink too? Mm -hmm. Keep speaking when I'm clearly doing something off camera. All right, sorry. Okay. So <laughs> we'll edit out the lovers' quarrels. <laughs> so what can we do? I am you. Yeah. Whatever. So what can we do to mm. self-care? And is there any signs that we're burning out? What can we do? Oh, snap! You snap. Yeah. That is. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. Who else can I help? Who else can I help? Who else can I help? Get the fuck away from me. Yeah. Shut down. Rage quit. That is, yeah. Rage quit life. Yeah. Not all of life, obviously, but you, well. When but I, rage quit, just. I'm a psych nurse, and when I was working at adult ward, I used to do seven on and seven off, and that last seven, that seventh day. That you did before. Yeah, I was just, I yeah, needed was some emotional first aid at that point. They were dark days. And yeah, those people were a lot and, and they you, took a lot. You feel it a little bit. Once you kind of pay more attention to it, you can feel it brewing. But 
if you're too far gone, you're not going to feel that snap happen mm. until you've just absolutely like shut someone out of your life, had to leave work, um, mm. just flipped out at someone and they're like, holy shit, I didn't see this coming. You were cool 30 minutes ago. All I asked was like one more little favor that normally you'd be super accommodating with because you're always doing shit for people because you just like this, just in your generous spirit. And it might just be like one, the straw that broke the camel's back and mm. out. So what are some signs before oh, yeah. things get dark? Um, I think it would be different for each person. Yeah, you're just tired. Yeah, you're, fatigue. You're wanting to- Agitation. You wanted to avoid kind of pretty normal-ish things. Mm. Spending more like, and more time. Maybe you have an invitation out. to hang out with a friend and you decline it. Um, perhaps you want to spend less time with your family if you've mm. got a family like we do. Um, I want to spend less time with the kids. Yeah. Um, when you're feeling really depleted. Yeah, me too. You want to spend I'll probably isolate from you. Mm. Just need like super duper extreme alone time. Yeah, you might subconsciously create fights and you're not even angry with the person. Yeah, you just need space. You just want to have an excuse to have alone time yeah. because maybe you're a little bit codependent. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Uh, um, maybe. Yeah, you pick a fight and run away. It's yeah. a good one. Good unhealthy technique. And. Another sign is that you haven't been doing the usual things to keep yourself healthy. Maybe that's having a good diet. Maybe that's doing some kind of spiritual practice, whether it's yoga or... Maybe you put off that exercise for the fifth session in yeah, a row. Eating well, um, reading some kind of books that really uh, feed your soul. Uh, it could be yeah, meditations if you do that. And that can be frustrating when you have a super duper active mind. Yeah, and when when you're not in when meditations and you're really adverse to doing them, then that could be also a sign. Mm. When you are just like extreme level procrastinator, not normal level. When you're extreme level. That's and, when you're having helpless, hopeless thoughts too. Like, mm. this ain't working, I can't do it. What the fuck's the point? Yeah, what's I've the tried point? so hard, I give so much to everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> and it all they ends have some up. Little red flags popping up around the place until the point where you crash and leave work for the day. You do one of these to everyone, yeah. and you're like, Audi 5000. Like, fucking survive without my help, bitches. And your little ego in you is telling you that they won't survive, they'll probably survive. Yeah. But you need to be conscious of the fact that you're a super important member of a lot of teams. You're just a little bit different. And sometimes working in teams can be really draining. Being around people can be really draining. Helping people, really draining. Let's wrap this one up. Nice to meet you. So yeah, nice to meet you too. We're not talking to each other, we're talking to people there. I know, that's what I'm saying, nice to meet them. You ever said something that sounded sarcastic and you weren't being sarcastic? All the time, regularly. Yeah, that's, that was that. my dry tone of voice. So, look after you. <laughs> and if you know someone who's an INFJ and you're interested in them and you want to care for them, you need to say no to them and pick up on what they're doing for you a little bit too much that you probably do for yourself. Oh yeah. yeah. And just say, sweetheart, <laughs> you need to look after you. Mm. Yeah, look for the signs. I know it's not as appealing as looking after others. Avoidance is definitely an INFJ trait, I feel. Yes. But look in that mirror and look at that person and start saying, I'm gonna help you. That sounded really like a platitude. Yeah, I do. That's but right. But you get true. it. You get it, right? Just look after you. Make time for your health. Health, health, health. See you in the next one. Please comment what has really helped you to kind of restore your kind of INFJ battery cell that you have mm. somewhere in this somewhere in this area. It could be on the left side of your it's chest. Probably in here. Yeah, this, this one too. Full. This needs a 
to be plugged into the wall. I know. Subscribe too if you haven't already. Peace out. <laughs>